Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and as always for anyone new to the channel my name is Lee also known as Osiris. Today we are continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content and featuring another rental team from one of you fine viewers. Today we've got a team from NG uh, who actually provided this team over on our Discord community. Uh, he finished, he had a top 8 finish with this team in the Asia Star Tournament which is an amazing finish. Uh, it's a very unique team uh, and one that I saw and I thought well we have to we have to play it i mean the one thing that sticks out for us straight away is the obstagoon there with uh obviously the choice scarf giving that speed boost to it initially with switcheroo to kind of shut down opposing threats you've got icy wind for speed control snarl to shut down opposing special attackers and then the knockoff which comes in so handy to get rid of those really useful items on your opposing uh side of the field and then we've got the thunderous but the the theory in form here it matches up super well against things like reggie alecki opposing thunderous and zapdos and to name a few uh with dark pulse electro web for that speed control again and then the really interesting tyranitar build here with that weakness policy and dragon dance to give you the ability to kind of set yourself up in those situations get that weakness policy proc and then start just absolutely ripping through the opponent's team tyranitar one of my favorite pokemon if not probably my favorite pokemon of all time so really like to see that there then you've got the sand rush dracovish on here as well with the substitute the fish's ren the psychic fangs helps against the screen support um, and takes advantage of the sand stream that the tyranitar will be able to put up on the field got the toga kiss there with a bit of redirection support especially helping out things like the tyranitar to set up and then the cartoon with the assault vest gives a little bit of stability to the team i'm very excited about playing this one and uh, big shout out to nicholas for providing the rental um for the team we'll have a couple of games of the team now hopefully pilot it short how it can operate and uh, see how good it can do in the uh, on the ladder and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end of the episode so thanks so much for tuning in friends hope you enjoyed today's games and without further ado we'll get into our first match of today first up today we have a team of scissor tornadus zapdos inteleon metagross and landris theory in form so what is going on here uh, we've obviously got speed control with the tornadus i'd imagine there's maybe a sock combination going on with the zapdos uh maybe disquake combination between that and the landris potentially i don't know um but there's obviously the the brutal swing combination tailwind with that metagross and then the double steel um with that metagross and scissor given different options um and given primarily tyranitar a pretty hard time if we do decide to bring it here uh, even though it is good against some of the opposing pokemon on my opponent's team namely the uh the tornadus and the zapdos got to watch out for that intimidate from the uh lander is going to make things a little bit difficult but obstacle in a nice position where it can take advantage of potentially uh the scarf with that that defiant ability to take advantage of the um the intimidate if we do see it come out uh hmm Mm, this is tricky very tricky i mean thunderous is a nice option as well as a lead here it kind of helps against pretty much most things on the opposing team i think we've got obstagoon thunderous tyranitar feels like it's going to be good in this match and then maybe dracovish to kind of round things off because if we can get in that sand stream uh stall out the tailwind for my opponent um it feels like the fish's rend will be able to kind of cut through and kind of be the cleanup crew that we need at the end of the end of the match which would be really good and the countdown is on friends really because we've not got long left of series nine which is you know a lot of people are kind of uh thankful for that a lot of people like the format as well you know i don't mind it i think it's 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 a, it's an interesting format um but we're in this weird stage at the minute aren't we where we're getting new formats like every three months so it feels like when we don't get one and we go back to an old one it, it doesn't quite feel right you know what i mean um, I'm just hoping Series 10 we do get a new rule set uh, and a new bunch of things to kind of give Sword and Shield a lease of life before we get Diamond Pearl remakes in November. Okay, so my opponent leading off with Tornadus Scissor. Uh, Tailwind is likely to come out. Uh, the Obstacoon in a little bit of a tricky spot. But is the Scissor going to be able to outspeed the Obstacoon even in a Tailwind? Um, and we could Electro Web as well, which... Yeah, I feel like Electro Web's quite a nice option, you know. We could Icy Wind and Electro Web and just get rid of the Tailwind advantage from my opponent straight off the bat. It does lock us into... I feel like maybe... Actually, let's go knock off into Scissor. Get rid of its item and go Electro Web. Lock in. Just to speed a bit, because you can imagine Tailwind coming out. Ooh, no Tailwind, no Tailwind at all. Something's maxing. Is it going to be the Scissor? 
Has it gone straight into the, the Obstagoon to try and pick up a knockout? Potentially. Uh, Max Flutterby. It could be the option there. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm like, I'm totally guessing at the minute because it's not a combination that we really see too much. Oh dear. <laughs> the knockoff gonna do zip. Because right, there's gonna be a Lumberry there. So Swagger. Okay, didn't see that coming. Uh, makes things a little bit more tricky for sure. Do get the knockoff. Doesn't really do very much because of that. Um, because the Lumberry's gone. The Electro Web doing super nice damage to the Tornadus. Uh, gets a crit on Scissor as well, which is really useful. And we'll see where the Scissor attacks into. I would say maybe the Obstagoon. Um, it frees up the Landorus to kind of come in as well a little bit. Gonna be that Max Flutterby. Yep, reduce the special attack on our Thunderous and removing the Obstagoon from the field, which is not ideal. I don't think the crit mattered there. I really don't. Um, but my opponent now in that position with, uh, well, plus two scissor. That's kind of scary. Uh, um, hmm, hmm. We don't want to bring Tyranitar in because we can't protect. And a max steel spike is going to do a, a horrible, horrendous amount of damage. Dracofish feels like a good option right now. Um, I think... A nice idea could be protecting, mm, protecting, and then get the electro web again. Or do we, hmm, do we max vicious rend and go electro web? Because they're going to tailwind, like, regardless. But we should be able to get, I mean, we could double into the scissor here, to be honest. It's just, um, it might be better even switching out. I don't think you go after the scissor though, to be honest. I think you go after the Dracovish, which if we're maxed, we should be able to take an attack plus two, should be. Am I underestimating the plus two scissor here? Getting caught out turn one by this combination. And this is a good thing. This is a real positive about this series, you know? You you can come into the ladder and you can come across these really unique kind of strategies that players are kind of uh, going forward with. And it's it's really nice to see, you know? I still think Thunderous probably gets the, the yeah, gets the jump. Remove the Tornadoes from the field. And we are going to get this Vicious Rend, which is, uh, which is useful because we'll be able to hit first, obviously. And then potentially the next turn we can get the, the Sand up, get that Sand Rush ability. It does conflict with our max move, you know, if we do go for the max with Dracovish, but it's going to be in a position to get knocked out the next turn. Uh, we'll just have to see what the scissor kind of decides to, to go for. Max Flutterby again, plus two. Where are we going this time into the, the Dracovish? Okay, we do take that. It does, it does a ridiculous, horrible amount of damage. Now we might be in a little bit of a, a bind because I think the next turn we've got to really prioritize getting rid of the scissor regardless of what comes in because if it goes back to its a normal form it's going to have access to bullet punch and it's going to be able just to pick things off at plus two which makes things very difficult for us. So we can try and maybe maybe protect Dracovish An attack with scissor or oh, if something comes in, mm, it's Zapdos. Mm. Okay. I mean, an electro web will be really, yeah, an electro web is all, uh, or do we guarantee? I think we max guard and it's a pity we haven't got Volt Absorb here, but I don't think we necessarily need it. Um, the plus two isn't helping us out a bunch, but the Thunder is not really threatened at all. We just Thunderbolt the Scissor. The issue would be if the Scissor goes max guard here. But a Thunderbolt. Okay, Hurricane. Yep. And a Thunderbolt should take the Scissor down. Yeah. Even minus two. And now what we can do potentially next turn is... Um, it might be even worth... Like, one of the options is obviously switching Thunderous out, resetting those drops, getting Tito onto the field. Um, but the problem is with the Tailwind up at the minute... My opponent's got the option where they're still going to have the speed jump on everything. So it might be worth 
protecting Thunderous, switching Dracovish out to T-Tar. And then the next turn we switch. Uh, uh, it's just really it's just really awkward. It's just really awkward because we kind of want an endgame where we've got the Dracovish in the sand to deal with the Landorus. But we also at the same time want to reset the drops on Thunderous. But do we necessarily need to reset the drops on Thunderous? Um maybe not. I know we're kind of foregoing our max turns, but it's likely we see like Hurricane Rock Slide here. So Tito can potentially get in, in for for free, almost for free. You know, it's not going to take a massive amount unless we see like Earthquake, which I don't necessarily see us having to deal with. There's a Hurricane, Tyranitar avoids and Rock Slide, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if Titar will be able to take an earthquake. Not a life. Not from the life orb. Not from the life orb. Um, and how many turns? Have, how many turns have we got? We've got one turn of tailwind left. Uh, I mean, the issue is for my opponent. What do you do? You 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 have to earthquake, right? So it means that potentially Thunderous has a turn to get an attack off. Because if you rock slide here. And Tito gets its rock slide off, okay. Um so we I think we Electro Web. We could Dark Pulse. Nah, we Electro Web. We Electro Web. Cool. Yeah, we Electro Web, I think. I think that's probably the best. Just to reduce the speed in that Zapdos. It goes for the heat wave, Tyranitar avoids. Thunderous will take a chunk, but it's not a huge chunk, and there's the earthquake to guarantee that knockout onto the Tyranitar. I wonder if we do survive, I doubt it. No, not with that life orb. Not with the life orb, but this opens it on now for us to get Dracovish in. Go for that vicious rend into the Landorus, pick up the knockout, and then Thunderous can kind of deal with the Zapdos. It's unlikely. Wow, is that a crit? Yeah, that's that's a bit lucky on our end. It makes it a bit more manageable. Um, it's unlikely that the Landorus has protect, but Thunderous should be able to get the knockout onto Zapdos the next turn anyway with a Thunderbolt. You would imagine. So it's a very, very, very close margins here, but at the same time, a win is a win. A win is a win, and we've tried to eke out a board position where we can kind of do this. So Fisher's Rend should be enough, like I say, and then the Thunderbolt. Should get the Zapdos. Should, should. And that Zapdos minus one with the Tailwind gone now. So we're, um, we're in the driving seat with Dracovish. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully it can pick up the knockout onto Landorus. Like if it misses, then we're kind of lost. <laughs> but I'm confident. I'm confident in our, in our weird mutated looking fish. Right, Fish's Rand coming out. Here we go. It is enough. It is enough. <sighs> you know when you're just like, is it going to be enough? Or can we see this Landorus just hanging on there? And the Thunderbolt enough as well. So that life orb boost there. Just giving us the edge. Critical hit. Definitely helping out though. That we got from that Electro Web. But a very good game to our first opponent. And the team comes out on top. So that is great news for us. You know we always like to see that. Um, sometimes it doesn't always go that way. But uh, it has for us today. So we will move swiftly on. To our next opponent of the episode and next today we have a galarian zapdos of raichu the cantonian variant porygon 2 venusaur tapu finny and incineroar pretty solid looking team overall you've got nice options of trick room in there or preventing trick room if you want with that porygon 2 uh, disruption methods as well potentially there with eerie impulse on either the p2 or that raichu both get access to that the lightning rod going to be a little bit awkward to get uh thunderous kind of operating in this one because you do rely on it to um, deal with something like that Galarian Zapdos, um, but it doesn't really have the matchup like the Incarnate version against things like the Venusaur. But I think Thunderous as a late game Pokemon can be can be phenomenal. You know, um, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what our best approach to this is going to be. <sighs> Tyranitar not really in a great spot. I mean the the Obstagoon as well. I mean, the Obstagoon's not bad for the Scarf because we can knock off items, which is always good, especially onto that P2, which might be quite useful. The Intimidate from the Incineroar, we get to punish that. It's just the fact that if we see like Tapu Fini lead, then we're in a little bit of an awkward spot. Um, but we could bring something like Cartana to this match, which I think 
does do a decent job. We've just got a lot of fighting weakness, haven't we, in the team? Um, okay, so I think what we're going to do is go with Thunderous, Togekiss, and Cartana, and lock in before the time runs out. And I hope that this combination will be enough to get us through this second game today. It's always difficult and tricky when I'm talking a lot about the opposing options and then we look at our options and then we look at the timer and we see we've got like 10 seconds left and it's, uh, I've been doing well recently of not timing out so I want to kind of keep that trend going and maybe if we had a little bit longer to analyze the um, and articulate the, the team options and what options we've got available to us it might work out a little bit better but We'll deal with what we've got right now. Um, P2 coming out and the Galarian Zapdos. So what we could potentially do. Like I do expect to see maybe something like the Raichu come in here. But we could kind of cover bases with a knockoff. The only issue is with the knockoff, right? Is it's not going to get... It's not going to pick up the knockout. And if they get the Trick Room up, it becomes a little bit more difficult for us although they don't really have a huge like trick room abuser in their team which is a plus for us so you would think that something like p2 is in there um to kind of mitigate trick room rather than set it up so we'll lock in with a knockoff get rid of that you're like doesn't do too much damage either, which I'm surprised about. And no Raichu switch, which is really useful. Do a big fat chunk to that Zapdos. Um, and we do activate that Defiant ability, unfortunately, which is not the big draw that we want to be doing here, you know? Um, this is going to be hitting a lot harder. Close combat. Yeah, we do lose Obstagoon. And we'll see what this P2 does. Does it go just for an Ice Beam, maybe? Ice Beam. Potentially. I wonder if they brought the Raichu, though. That's the big thing, you know? Or do they just go for Trick Room? Trick Room. That's not so... That's not ideal. Okay, especially with Cortana in the back. Uh, Togekiss feels like the best option right now. Um, and we can dazzle, we can protect. But what's likely to come in for my opponent, you know? I think the big thing for us is to... Uh, I think you could follow me. I don't really worry about what the Zapdos is going to do. And the Dazzle feels like it it can do a good sizable amount. Mm, Protect here can stall out a little bit of the Trick Room turn. So my opponent's not got um, a real solid way to uh, to utilize them. The Electro Web kind of biting us a little bit. Ally Switch coming out, which is fine. Don't mind that. Don't mind seeing that one little bit. Um, You'll see the Dazzling Gleam. We are under speed in the Zapdos anyway, so that, that is useful. So we'll be able to remove it from the field. Mitigate that slot and uh, do a nice bit of damage to the Porygon too. Kind of put it in a situation where it really has to recover the next turn. Uh, to just prolong that time on the field. And Tabu Finny, there we go. That's what we like to see. That's what we like to see, especially if there's no Raichu there. Um, now we could max. I mean, we could just follow me as well. But maybe Max and Thunderous isn't a bad play. And just going for a follow me. I just worry then if the Raichu is in the back. But is it? Is the Raichu in the back? I don't know. Might be worth getting rid of the, the P2 before anything else. The only thing I worry about here is like Ice Beam and Moonblast from my opponent. I think we follow me. I think we take the opportunity, pull the trigger, go Max Lightning into this, into this Finny. Because Cortana can deal with the P2, like, all day long, you know? They are Max and the Finny as well. So, I wonder if it's going to be Max Geyser. I'd imagine that's what we'll probably see. Like, Cortana feels like a good Max Pokemon as well. It's less risky as well, because then you're not worrying about the Raichu. But I think, in all honesty... If they had the Raichu, it would have been on the field by now in front of the Thunderous, you know. And the nice thing about the Finny Maxon as well, follow me, is like complete protection for us. Because it, it gets rid of that spread attack that potentially is coming out from the, the Tapu Finny. And gives us a little bit of time to stall out these last few Trick Room turns before we can get like the Cartana on the field. Ideally next to the Thunderous and then we can just kind of have that cleanup crew going on. So we'll get the follow me off. It'll redirect all attacks. 
namely that eerie impulse that potentially could come out. Ooh, the discharge. We love to see the discharge, though. You keep doing that, P2. You're going to damage your own Finny at the same time. Um, and the Wackenberry coming in quite useful there for the Togekiss. Just to reduce a little bit of that damage output. Is that a weakness policy? It is. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Let's see how much a Max Lightning can do. Oof. We don't like to see that. Oh, it's Max Hailstorm as well. Oh. Weakness policy Finny. Wiping out our Togekiss. We're getting all the, all the tricks today. This one feels like it's just got incredibly harder straight away. At least there's not Berry there to um, protect it. Maybe a helping hand would have been the option. But then we probably would have taken a Max Hailstorm with a Thunderous anyway. Not quite enough. Not quite enough. We do get rid of that terrain. Okay, well our only option is Cortana here, you know, we need Cortana to come in and um, get rid of the Finny, and then and then it's happy days, but is Cortana with the Assault Vest not maxed, going to be able to take a combination of attacks with the Assault Vest? You've got to hope it's going to be able to. <sighs> Feels tough. So, let's go for the Leaf Blade. Seems like so straightforward, but like the Finny is so threatening right now. And if it max guards this turn on our max guard, we are done for. But we don't re we can't risk it. We can't risk it. We're so we're, f we're kind of far behind at this point. We're not miles behind, but we are far behind. You know, the weakness policy Finny. I love it. I do love it. And again, it's like just highlighting some really unique kind of innovative ideas in Series 9, you know. So it's not it's not as stale. It's not as stale. But uh, there are still lots of lots of shenanigans going around. No! We don't want to see the ally switch. That's the one thing I didn't really... I should have been thinking about it, you know. Uh, Hailstorm into the, the Thunderous. Obviously going to... Yep. Yep, yep. But we are going to get a Beast Boost. The problem is if the, the last Pokemon is the Incineroar, which I would imagine it probably is. Which is not going to help us out one little bit, especially with these trick room turns. We need a double protect, don't we? I've never had two max guards in a row. Never. Never in my life have I had two max guards. Um, and I think that's what we're going to need to see out this trick room. Is it Incy? Ooh, it's right. Right? What? Why is it? Why? Why? Why have you Why have you taken so long to... to to, to appear. We're going to get faked out into Cortana. Um, hmm, yeah, Trick Room. We need we need this Max Guard. I've never seen a double Max Guard, so I don't even know if it's possible. We get it! We get it! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! Okay. Well, where's the Finny going now, though? After the Thunderous. Yeah, come on. We love to see it. We love to see it. We love to see it. Now we've got it. <laughs> I love the celebration. I'm so happy just for getting like the jankiest RNG. But you gotta go for it. You gotta go for it if you want these these W's. Like I say, I've never had it before, so I'm clicking it, just hoping that we would get it. But uh, it's just it's just happened, which is phenomenal. So I think what we need to do is Dark Pulse and then Leaf Blade. Uh, Leaf Blade. Um, what's all right? You gonna do to? Let's just double up into the Finny. I don't want Electro Web because I don't want to boost the Raichu's attack. And Dog Pulse is definitely going to be enough. There's like a, just a whiff of HP there. Speed Swap. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It doesn't matter. Whatever's left will be able to. Oh, jeez. I say whatever's left. Cortana left. Good job we... Uh... No, it's not. Ah, it is. It is. It's fine because that right use like slow is the slowest thing in the world now. <sighs> what an exciting game, though! What an exciting game! What amazing text my opponent's got. The, the, my, my opponent's team is amazing. I love this team. This is a team that we're facing that I would love to to to, to pilot on the channel, um, and maybe take some inspiration from to put something together ourselves. So. Let's wrap this up with a Leaf Blade and then uh, we can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. But what a game to kind of kick us off today. 
uh, which has been amazing. And we've had two great opponents with amazing, innovative teams, which is always very exciting. And uh, I feel very lucky to have been on the ladder at this precise time where we can kind of get and capture these games and also feature this amazing team from NG. So uh, it's all been good. So hopefully you've enjoyed it, friends. Good game to my opponents. And we'll jump over now and we'll just have a reminder of today's rental. Right, friends, here is today's rental team. I hope you have enjoyed today's battle they've been really fire like just unbelievable it's a shame we didn't get to really see the t-tar do much work uh we brought in that first one and it kind of did a, it served a purpose but we didn't really get to see the weakness policy variant kind of going but uh i'd say the star of the show has definitely been that thunderous all around thunderous Therian is an amazing pokemon i've had a lot of very good success experiences with it in the past uh obviously got to a final of sheffield regionals was the last time i piloted it in a competitive environment and it was phenomenal Phenomenal that day, you know, and uh, back in even 2013, I uh, got third place at UK Nats that year to get uh, my world's invite um, to Vancouver that year. So, yeah, Thunderous Theory, it's definitely got a special place in my heart because it's always something I've relied on at times a competitive scene and it's always done well. It hits like an absolute truck. The vault absorbs really nice and uh, it's just one of those Pokemon that does very well with that 101 speed stat, which gets a jump on a lot of big threats and even in this format you know so big shout out to nicholas once again ng their handle over on the discord if you are over there do give them a shout out and um we'll wrap things up there friends we'll be back later in the week with more teams to feature thank you to everyone once again for providing the rental teams that we're playing at the minute they are a lot of fun so do keep them coming if you've got them uh, and we'll get through them over the next couple of weeks while we say goodbye to series nine but on that note friends take care of yourselves have a great rest of your day and i will see you all for another episode very soon so until then take care and bye bye